Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, I love The Prince of Egypt. I love that you've now turned it into a musical. It's so great because, you know, you're bringing back the charm that was there and, um, you know, spirit of it. And so talk about that process of, you know, converting it from uh, a, an animated project into this this big time musical. Sure. Well, you know, one of the things things that was so wonderful about getting to work on this is we can take this great film, this beloved great film, and it, expand it for the stage, you know, um, and really delve more deeply in some cases into the characters and the relationships, but also take the, the great and iconic moments like Deliver Us or Through Heaven's Eyes or When You Believe and figure out theatrical ways to bring that to the stage. It was, it was really a thrilling process from from start to finish and i i think i worked on the show for you know close to you know maybe 10 years before we before we brought it to the west end so it was a really wonderful journey wow well you've done a lot of you know a lot of things and so what was it about this uh project that you just wanted to take it and roll with it well, I I love the score. I love the story. Um, you know, I, I my name is Scott Schwartz. I I we celebrated Passover when I was growing up, so we told that story, and it was always one of my favorites. Um, you know, of the of the Jewish holidays when we would celebrate because it's such a fascinating and complicated and you know rich story. Um, and frankly, to take this massive story and find a way to put it on stage was a, a really thrilling opportunity for me as director. Um, how do we take, you know, contemporary theatrical techniques and use those to tell a story that's been told for 3,000 years in a new, fresh way and also take this glorious um uh, visual story and translate it to the stage. Um, originally, um, my father actually was called by Jeffrey Katzenberg to help him with the theology of it. And so oh, he brought wow. together some theologians um, on the, you know, animated project. And yeah. so uh, we kind of have a connection there, which is really cool. I've heard um, about this part of the process. I mean, that obviously well predates me, my involvement, but I, I heard about uh, your father, I, I guess, and, and some of the others that Jeffrey brought together. Yeah, the theologians, um, you know, because the faith world is so, you know, when you put out something that's kind of has this uh, background to it with faith and, and you know, the biblical stories, people want to yeah. know that, that it kind of, you know, follows along what they believe and everything. So sure. uh, well, now, that was very important on on the movie, and I think also on the on the show. I'm sure, yeah. Now, somewhere I got a note that you also are collaborating with your father as well. Am I right on that? Or yes, well, the Stephen Schwartz, who's the composer, is in fact my father. So yes, we we had a father son journey as well on this. I love that, and um, that is so you know incredible. And and he's been in the theater world for a long time as too. And so um, uh, that you know, does it come full circle that you guys can work on together on a project, or what's what's kind of the feeling there? Yeah, it was it was such a joy. I mean, he and I have worked together a couple of times. I mean, mostly our careers have been separate and we've done our own things. But there have been a couple of wonderful opportunities when we've gotten to to play together and you know this was the most recent and you know really getting to spend the time with him figuring out and, and the book writer Philip Lezebnik who was a very important part of the whole process of course um figuring out how to translate this story for the stage was really a joy and also what new musical opportunities were there because it was a full length musical as opposed to a 95 minute film you know, that that allowed um, Stephen, my father, to expand the musical palette of the show as well. And there are wonderful new songs um, throughout. Of course, there are the famous well-known songs from the movie, but I think there are maybe 12 new songs in the show and a lot of a lot of new music. 
That's incredible. And it makes you, you know, just hearing the music again, it's just in my head. <laughs> oh, sure. Oh, sure. It's a catchy, it's a catchy it's, score for sure. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, and some of the themes, can you talk a little bit about some of the themes in there that you kind of hope that, you know, maybe younger audiences get out of it that that learn something from it? Sure. Well, I mean, one goal was, of course, to tell the story of Moses and the Passover story um, in, you know, a, a contemporary way, but still honor that story um, and tell it as as faithfully as possible. Um, but in doing that, to go as deep as we could into the human beings in the story, to really make it a human story about relationships, about the struggles that these people go through, so the audience could feel a, a deep personal connection with, with the people in the story, that it's not about sort of like big icons. Yes, they're very famous names, Ramses, Moses, you know, Seti, and so on, but it's it's about real people um, contending with extraordinary circumstances, and I think for me that's one of the central themes of of the show of this telling of the story is how do we as human beings contend with events in the world that are bigger than us? How do we try to do good in this world? How do we try to make a difference in this world when there are things that are larger than? and that are beyond our control. And I think particularly nowadays, when, you know, we've lived through a pandemic now, we did the show before the pandemic, of course, but now we've been through this pandemic, there are conflicts around the world. And sometimes it can just feel overwhelming and, and dwarfing to us individually. And this story is about people like you and me, you know, trying to navigate in extraordinary times. And I think to tell that story and to tell it in an, uh, a human and um, psychological and emotional way, hopefully will speak to people um, whether or not they know this story. I think if you know this story and, and it's important to you um, and your faith or your culture, um, I hope you'll get a lot out of it. Um, but even if it's a new story to you, there are parts of the world where this film is going to be shown where this isn't uh, a story that's a part of their, their cultural tradition. We hope that it will still speak to them because of these deeper issues. It will. I think it really will. It's a great story and you've done a great job. Um, and it's interesting you say that I do feel, you know, we all kind of feel it, right? Because nowadays, we're even more inundated and, and knowledgeable of what's going on in the world because of social media and, and media that we get all of it. We know everything. It's not just the local news that you know, which, you know, back in the day, it was just the local news you knew what was going on. Um, so it's interesting you say that because I've been thinking about that as well. But Well, and look, in the end, it's a story about belief and what do we believe? How do we believe can we believe in ourselves? Can we believe in something bigger than ourselves? And I think these are questions mm -hmm. we all contend with in our lives. If you enjoy videos that follow your values like ours and you want to help us continue, uh, go to movieguide.org slash donate because we're actually a nonprofit. You may not know that, but we're working in Hollywood every day to help families have more choices that follows their values. And also subscribe right now.